Hello all and welcome. My name is Andy and this is So Andy Sews. Uh, and welcome to my new location. I'm being attacked by a triffid behind me at the moment. I hope the lighting's okay. It's really bright outside today. It's a lovely sunny day. So I thought I'd come, pop on and take the chance to have a quick chat to you about the honey blouse here. This is by Fibre Mood and my first ever pattern review, actually. Um, Alyssa, who is by Alyssa on Instagram, contacted me a couple of weeks or so ago, middle of January, uh, and she'd been watching a fabric haul I did and spotted this fabric. And I said at the time that I really wanted to make the honey blouse. I'd been totally inspired by Lauren from Guthrie & Garney, who made it in this fabric without the ruffle down the front, but had made this blouse in this fabric probably about a year or so ago now. I instantly bought the pattern and went on, and this is the fabric is from Fabric Godmother. It's a satin viscose fabric, this one. And went on and they had at the time, I think a choice of four different colors, if memory serves. Now I know definitely there was a pink, there was a lilac, there was a green because I bought the green, um, which is this lovely color. And I think there was a mustard color. Um, so initially I bought this green fabric, didn't cut out the honey blouse. I actually cut out the sew over it Juliet blouse because I've made about three of those now. And I know that I like the pattern and I wanted something in this fabric because I loved it so much that um, I wanted to try it and test it. But when Alyssa spoke to me a couple of weeks or so ago, she said that she was going to make the honey blouse and Ruan, who'd also got the same fabric, was also going to make the honey blouse and would I like to sort of not do a collab as such but we've all decided to make the blouse and then put it on Instagram on Valentine's Day so it's like a little Valentine's blouse and as you can see I'm channeling the, the hearts today I've got hearts on this one as well uh, this is the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra if anyone wants to know so I said yeah absolutely she gave me the motivation to get the pattern out and the fabric and and have a go at it and I, funnily enough, was watching Ruan, um, Yorkshire Soap Girl, I'm sure you all know that, but was watching Ro Ruan uh, with her latest vlog and she was talking about us making this and I think it was last Wednesday. And as she was talking about it and as I was watching her, I was actually cutting it out. I've made lots of you, as you'll, have, if you've looked at my previous vlog, you'll know that I've made quite a few blouses before. So putting collars in and things like that it d d doesn't really phase me. This threw me, this pattern. <laughs> I'm gonna just go through some of the stages and some of the steps. And hopefully what I've learned from this might, might help you if you want to make one in the future. So to start, this was the first ever Fibre Mood pattern that I have made. And when you print it off, it is a layered pattern. And when you print it off, it comes in um, the sizes, and I will put the sizes down below, but you have the standard size, and then you have the SA, which is the seam allowance. So I decided to add the, to print it off with the seam allowance. So you get two lines on the actual pattern itself. You get the cutting line and you get the seam allowance line. I think generally throughout this, it's a one inch seam allowance or three eighths, uh, sorry, a one centimetre, not a one inch, oh, big seams. Um, yeah, the three eighths of an inch or one centimetre seam allowance. And as I say, it's layered. So I like the fact that it's layered when you're printing the PDF off. If it's not layered, you tend to find that I, I get lose track about which, which line I'm following sometimes. So I like the layered patterns. So printed that all off, stuck it together. And I actually did that quite a few weeks ago. I think at the beginning of January. So I had it in mind that I was going to make this and I knew that I wanted to make it in this. I just needed the motivation to do it. So thank you, Ruan and Alyssa, for giving me the motivation to do it. Now, I watched a couple of um, vlogs back of people who'd made this previously, in particular, Catherine from Soverton Makery. And when she was making hers, she didn't put the frill on the front, but she did have a couple of tips that I thought that were very handy for me as I was going through and I was making it. One of which was to leave an inch at the collar here when you put the frill in 
for your seam allowance. It doesn't say that in the instructions and I will get to the instructions shortly. And the second tip was she used a knit interfacing on her blouse. Now, because this is such a floaty fabric, the only interfacing that I had was quite a bit stiffer than, than I actually wanted. So I used a knit interfacing with this and it has given a really lovely floaty feel to it. It's a pig to use and a pig to iron onto this. Take your time if you're using it. It is worth it, definitely. Um, and yeah, I, I've interfaced obviously the collar and you've still got a lot of movement and flexibility in the collar and around the cuffs here. So I would really recommend doing that. But like I say, take your time with it. Right, so let's start off first of all with the instructions. Now, I, I am a, I'm a bit naughty in that I think I know because I've sort of got a little bit of experience, I think I know what I'm doing. So I just lay the patterns out, made sure they were all on grain. So I did all of that. And I thought, okay, I've got a back and a front. Um, now, originally I didn't want to make the one with the fr with, with the with the frill down the front, the front. Yeah, this one. Um, and I laid all the pattern pieces out cut everything out. Now I had two meters of fabric and I've been back and I've checked. I've got, I had two meters of fabric and I just squeaked it out of two meters of fabric. Normally I can get a blouse out of a meter and a half and a lot of them were single sided. So uh, yeah, it seemed to be fairly fabric hungry. So you've got some larger pieces with the frill here. Now I did cut the frill out. Wasn't sure if I was going to put it on, but I thought I'll cut the frill out uh, as an option for me. And I'm very glad that I did because when I actually came to construct it, if you want to make the, the version without the frill, you cut the two left-hand sides back to, as, as two pieces. So you don't cut a left and a right, you cut the left-hand side out and not the right-hand side. Well, I'd cut both sides out, had no more fabric left to recut another another side. And I will insert a picture that shows you exactly where it says to cut on uh, if you want to make the version without the frill. I think that should be at the top of the instructions. I really do. I, th I think the instructions should be made a lot clearer. It's a little yellow box that they pop in. Um, and OK, like I say, I'd skimmed through the instructions thinking that I knew what I was doing. Totally missed that bit. I didn't see that bit until I actually came to putting the um, blouse together. So that was the first mistake. I've grabbed my iPad because I've made copious notes, as you can probably say. Um, the instructions. Now, I would say if you're a beginner sewist, don't choose this pattern. As I say, I've made quite a few blouses in the past, so I have a fair idea uh, how to construct them. And it did make me smile when I looked at Andrea's Facebook post last night and she said she'd had issues with the instructions. And I'm thinking if Andrea's had issues with the instructions, then there's no hope for the rest of us. Yeah, they were sketchy, I think, is probably the best word I can use for them. There were no instructions like, especially if you're working with a fabric like this, stay stitching. So I stay stitch around the neckline before I put the collar in. Um, Think little things like that were, were left out and I, I found them very confusing. Now, as I say, I didn't intend to make the one with the frill on it, but I thought, well, whatever, I've, I've cut it out. I'll, I'll go for it because I had to because I'd cut the wrong front pieces out to make the one without the frill. When I was inserting this, I followed the instructions. Again, they weren't clear. And if you look back at pictures, I will put a picture in, it looks like the frill actually sits over the button placket like this down the front. Now I looked at Andrea's last night and Andrea's made hers exactly the same way that I've made mine. So I don't know whether we've missed or I've missed a step out or a stage, no idea what's going on. I, I quite like it like this, but I don't understand why all the pictures that I've seen of it show the frill going over the button placket like this. That was the first bit, <laughs> first of many. Um, so then once we got the button placket in, there were no instructions about actually sewing the placket down at all. So I chose to hand stitch that in because I didn't like it flapping about. 
and then it came to the bottom part here where you actually turn it back on itself and I couldn't figure that out at all. I managed to figure it out on the other side, which was fairly simple. You, you turn the fabric back on itself like this, sew down and then turn it out and then you've got a nice sharp corner. Well, I couldn't do it on this side because the frill was in the way. So I fudged that slightly. Um, I just folded it up and then hand stitched that down. So that wasn't very clear. At the back, you've got some pleating at the back and it burritos the yoke. Again, instructions really bad on how to do this. If you haven't done a burrito before, and I have, so I knew what I was doing, but I think for anyone sort of doing it for the first time, they'd be sort of completely perplexed at what you were supposed to do with that. Um, I just found it, there are so many other patterns that I've looked at and that I've used that show the burrito method, method a lot clearer than is shown in this pattern. So you burrito the back, so you've got all your nice seams enclosed at the back there. Um, then when it came to actually putting the collar in, I've done an awful lot of hand basting in this. Uh, I hand basted the collar in and it's partly because the fabric, the fabric was so, it's a beautiful fabric, really beautiful. It's lovely to wear, but it moves as soon as you look at it. And I threw everything I could with me. I've got a Benina 770 and I threw everything I could at this. Um, in fact, I will just go and get the foot plate and show you the one I used. Okay, so I had my, I put a Microtex needle in, I had my walking foot on and I changed my foot plate. So this is my normal foot plate. And as you can see where the needle goes in here, you've got quite a, a large area here. So that's if you're doing zigzagging or buttonholes or anything, then the needle can move from side to side. I changed it to this one here. You can see the difference. You've just got the one hole here. So the needle goes down here, which means there's less chance of the fabric getting pulled underneath into the feed dogs. Um, so I threw everything at this to try and uh, make sure I didn't get any fabric going below or, or the um, bunching up underneath. Um, that worked, but like I said, I did do a lot of hand basting in this as well. Um, and I find, especially with tricky fabrics like this, if you baste it in first or tack it in first, it really helps because you haven't got the pins in the way then when you're sewing and it gives you a bit of a line to sew around as well. So I did that with the collar. Now, another thing with the collar. So when you're putting the actual, and again, I measured the pattern piece together just in case I had stretched the fabric or done anything like that. And I had interfaced them as well. So the collar doesn't actually come to the end of the collar stand. I don't know if anyone else has found that, but I found it was about an inch gap between the end of the collar and the collar stand. Now, if that's the way it's been designed, great, but the pattern and the instructions don't tell you that. So the only way I got around that was I measured halfway around, measured the collar in, in half, measured the collar stand in half, used that point as the centre point at the back and then put the collar in um, and then joined the collar stand to the bottom placket at the front here. So there is a gap either side here. Now when it closes over, there is a little um, press stud that you're supposed to put on here but I think that I will probably not wear it with the top button closed because I prefer a sort of a, a V-neck here. I didn't put the um, little press stud at the top here. So when you close it over, your collars do, your the ends of the collars do come to the top of the placket, but the instructions didn't tell you that. Again, I think if you haven't got any experience with doing these, that would have, you'd have been scratching your head at that particular point in time. Okay, so collar was in, um, buttonholes, relatively sort of, you, you do that um, before you actually construct the whole blouse itself. So once you put the button placket on, you then do the buttonholes. So if you're going to make an error, it's not right at the end. Um, my machine did handle them fairly okay. And again, I've got an attachment that I put on to help with either thick fabrics or very slippery fabrics, but just test them first of all. And don't you hate it when you've tested it, it works perfectly, then you go to put the first one on your garment and that's when it decides to have a wobble. 
so right so that was that in we got and then we got to the sleeves so we've got these beautiful i love these these bits on the end here uh again i i scratched my head over the instructions with these and it's just simply you attach it from the inside you have to gather it round first of all um then you attach the actual you've sewn you've sewn this in half um and folded over one of the edges by um to give you this to give you your um seam allowance by an in a uh, centimeter there we go again and then you attach it on the inside you then sew up the ends um and turn them through so that they're the right sides facing you sew them up pull them through um and then you top stitch all the way around so we got that bit done putting the sleeves in themselves uh there's quite a lot of easing in there's no gathering stitches across the head of the sleeve so again i hand tacked those in first of all and you ease the sleeve head into the top um and then i sewed them in in place so they went in reasonably okay and then it came to the last part which was the hemming now I don't know what I'd done wrong. Um, something probably to do with the, the button placket at the front or the frill or something along here. The bottoms of my um, hems didn't meet up. One side, the side with the button placket was shorter than the side without. So I had to fudge that a little bit in order to get, because you top stitch around the bottom here. Now I could have hand stitched that around, but by this point in time, I'd had enough. Um, so I had to fudge it a little bit. So you can see on this side here, I didn't want to cut it off. I thought I'm just going to do it this way rather than trying to cut anything off. So I have got quite a large seam allowance here, but I have hand tacked it in around the sides so it doesn't fall down and nobody else is going to see that. So it's absolutely fine. And then I finished it off at the back with... Can we see? No, we can't. Let's take let's take it off, people. Hang on a second. There we go. Ooh. Finished it off with a beautiful label that um, we got from our Beyond the Pink Door Christmas subscription advent box. Um, yeah, I think it really sort of finishes it off here. So I will put some pictures in of me wearing it. Overall, I absolutely love it. I really love it. Um, would I make it again? Yes, I would. Now I've done the first one. Maybe doing the first one in this fabric was not the greatest of ideas. Um, but anything from this point onwards is going to be easier. I've got a very lovely um, Lana... Uh, <laughs> I can't even talk today. A very lovely Liberty Tana Lawn that I quite fancy making up in this. And I will put uh, well I won't sorry put the frill down the front with the next one I want a plain one now in terms of the other thing is in terms of the actual length of it I'm five foot four and you'll see by the pictures that I put in it is short it sort of just about covers the waistband of my jeans if you were any taller than me or you don't like a particularly cropped blouse lengthen it and I think I probably will do for the next one just maybe by about an inch um just to just so when you're putting your hands up, you're not showing midriff. No one wants to see that. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, I, I I absolutely love it. And a huge thanks to Ruan and Alyssa for encouraging me to actually get this made up. Um, yeah, so there you go. Let me know. Let me know what you think, and I will catch you all again very soon. Bye bye.